Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more interesting stories like these. Now, let's get into today's story video. Dear Abusive Cheater Dear Abuse, Cheater, so, how does it make you feel? How does it feel to know you've been apprehended? Do you know what it's like to get kicked out of a place? You've earned it, without a doubt. Let's take a look at what really happened, rather than what you've been telling yourself and your friends and family to keep them comfortable. You haven't had anything to do with me in five years. I did everything I could think of to get in touch with you. I tried chatting and yelling at the same time. I tried to be nice, loving, frigid, strong, and weak at the same time. Everything. I tried to convince you to join me to the treatment facility. I failed. You didn't seem to be interested. I told you that not being touched and being treated as if I were nothing more than a roommate made me feel so bad about myself that I contemplated taking my own life. You were still disinterested in what I had to say, despite the fact that it was detrimental to my physical and mental health. I made every effort to cope. You were still disinterested in what I had to say. Even though everyone and everything told me to go, I stayed because I felt you cared about me and my well-being. You were still disinterested in what I had to say. What was it that aroused your interest? Apart from keeping me around for my cleaning ability and income, what else is there to keep me around? M. A UPS driver, to be precise. Oh, he only gave me his phone number in case I wanted to make arrangements for a special pickup at a later time. Seriously, were you expecting me to purchase it? You wanted to have an emotional affair with him, but you couldn't. You were ready to send him the love messages you hadn't given me in years since you had missed me so much. Clearly, you were attempting to keep your whereabouts a secret from me. You were eager to demonstrate all of the indicators of cheating that were there. Yes, I did look at the messages on your watch and respond to them. I once observed your passcode, but I kept it a secret because I was losing trust in your ability to keep it. Yes, I was horrible with money, even if I tried to hide it, and I was much worse when it came to spending. Did you get authorization to send those SMS messages as a consequence of your actions? Cheating has no legal basis, hence the answer is no. You were the one who failed to remember to bring your watch from home with you on your trip. Is this anything that was done on purpose? I have my reservations. As a consequence, I spent time reading the texts. Honey, 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 you couldn't wait to get a glimpse of his amazing looks, could you? What about him was the highlight of your 2021? Is it not my fault? Isn't that your son, by the way? You've got to be kidding, don't you? That's your strategy for getting out of here after five years of ignoring me. Do you remember how you sought to explain away the passages in the texts? Oh, he's a buddy. That's how I refer to my clothes. Friends are created for you. Real? I have a large number of female friends, and I can guarantee you that this is not the way female friends interact with one another. To live with the realities of your past as an emotional abuser. Isn't that what you do, isn't it? I'd reach the end of my rope. Anything I had intended to say to you had been silenced, like a light switch had been flipped. I had reached the end of my rope. As seen by your existence, I am capable of dealing with a variety of situations, but I cannot deal with a cheater, not even an emotional cheater. As a consequence, I completely disregarded you during the weekend. With my headphones on, you were a stranger and an illness that I wanted to get rid of as quickly as possible. There is a toxin that has to be eradicated. So, how do you feel as a result of it? What is it like to be singled out for attention? Perhaps you should have changed your passcode. Perhaps, instead of lying to me when I confronted you, you should. have been looking for an apartment when I approached you. You were detained and publicly humiliated. I also wanted you to go. You, not your kid, are the one who should be punished. I couldn't take the thought of staring at you. You have many years to depart or to work on our issues if you so want. As a result, you decided to have your cake and eat it too so you could have a good time while I cried in silence. As a consequence, you were the one who suffered. You had to depart early and come home after I had fallen asleep in order to prevent shame on my part. As a result of your inability to address the consequences of your actions, you weren't even able to inform me when you were planning to relocate. I was only given two weeks to complete the project. Remember how I had to ask you twice before you agreed. When in the world are you planning to depart? I was the one who was shivering at this point, unfeeling. All I wanted was for you to be gone, and that was all I got. You are no longer a part of my life. I have moved on. I understand that it is not Christian to desire harm on one's rivals. Yet the Bible encourages us to love our adversaries regardless of our differences. 
but it was entertaining to see you struggle. I can tell you're scared. You were conscious of the fact that you had nowhere to go. Knowing that you had to deal with an expensive automotive payment was a burden. Let me give you an example of how having bad credit came in useful. What I enjoyed about you was how you had to hide behind your son's horrible girlfriend, too terrified to even stand out for yourself. Where has all of the icy indifference disappeared to? What happened to the med? I'm not sure, and I'm not sure I want to. Right now, the sight of you grab anything you could, run out the door as soon as you could with that small creature for protection, and scream at me while remaining quiet was something I well deserved. Is this correct? You have said that you are living with your son's, GF's family, which your son has publicly acknowledged. You just bought a home a couple of weeks ago. You now have your own private quarters, as well as two of our five cherished dogs. You better be kind to them, because I've already informed my rescue friends, and none of them seem to care for you at all. So, how do you feel as a result of it? There's just so much time in a day. She has taken refuge with her family. Running away in disgrace, leaving half of your belongings for me to give away or throw away is not acceptable. What does it feel like to sleep with your hand on a foreign pillow and nothing but your guilt to keep you company as you sleep? I made a lot of mistakes, but I accept responsibility for them, and I'm presently through counseling to find out why I made them and how I can change. I had a rediscovery of God. I was able to locate down my family once again. My life was rediscovered by myself. I'm starting to realize how much I'm appreciated. I'm feeling a lot better. So, please let me know. What emotions does it elicit in you? Do not worry, you have already been barred. Update 1. My ex-kid roommate surprised me last night when he showed up to pick up the remaining two boxes of stuff he had left behind in the apartment. My clothes was in the dryer when I saw him in the other side of my flat, which isn't really an apartment at all. He didn't want to bother me, so he just knocked on the top door, and they let him in without a problem. I wasn't sure whether I'd be able to make it, to be honest. I query as to how he is faring at the moment. Everything has changed at this point. He makes a statement. I wrap my arms around him and tell him how much I miss him and that he is always welcome in our house. He is now staying with the family of his girlfriend. I didn't ask him about her, and he didn't say anything about her either. That's precisely what I was looking for. After all, I ghosted her and moved on from the situation. She threw away or donated everything she had left behind, with the exception of what was still in the attic. My landlord and his family were as gracious as always, and he was able to leave with his belongings and on good terms with me when he did. I advised him not to approach anybody he didn't know. I'm praying against hope that he won't be. Everything has changed, to say the least. After I dumped and sent his unfaithful mother out of the house, I had the idea that he was frightened and under strain. Things were plainly not going well for him at the time. I feel sad for him, however, since she is still his mother, despite everything. Everything is one of a kind. It is because of his mother that they are. Update 2. Tonight, six weeks ago, I regained control of my life. I confronted her about her infidelity. I informed her that I was aware. That's when I saw the messages. That confirmed my suspicions. I dumped her right away. I ejected her. In the best conceivable manner, it seems so much longer. Six weeks later. I've regained control of my life. I've rediscovered my passion for my house. I'm free to do anything I want, whenever I want. My living room is just that, a living room, not the sofa she slept on every night for the final three years of our nine-year relationship. I'm back to my old self. I've returned. No more resisting the temptation to take my life in the next room. I'm in treatment and loving every minute of it. This should have been done a long time ago. Listen to me if you're going through what I went through. It will get better. It becomes less difficult. It's not your fault. You're going to get through this. Life is fantastic.